um, I want to show you how to make this doll dress with a two layered skirt on the small half inch gauge universal x -Lam. Um, the great thing about this is if you double the whole thing, you can make this a toddler dress out of the extra, extra large half inch gauge. Excellent. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to have two colors. I'm going to do a black with a multicolored pink. My multicolored pink is going to be my skirt. This skirt is going to be the easiest. Now it's done in several parts. Okay, so you're gonna need a lot of stitch holders, stitch markers, that kind of thing in order to do this, okay? So what you wanna do, because this is done in two halves, as you can see, and this is also done in two halves. And um, so if you're going to ask if you can make this on another loom, it's not likely. The easiest way to be able to make this is to make it on an X loom. Okay, so this is X loom specific for a American doll, anything like the American doll dress. It actually fits a number of dolls um, because it has stretch in the waistband and a little stretch in the neckline. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna do this base skirt first. Okay, and we're gonna be doing it decreasing. Okay, so what I have here is we want to start off with our wedges maxed out. Okay, and then what we want to do is just do an e-wrap cast on all the pegs, okay. So once we do that, then we're going to be doing a garter stitch um, for the bottom so that there's no curl, okay. Now I still pressed this dress because I thought it looked better pressed. So I still did a light pressing blocking of the dress, okay? Again, if you want, you can double this whole pattern and make it into a toddler dress if you have the, um, not the large X half inch, but the extra large half inch gauge X limb, okay? So, the ear wrap cast on one, and you're going to be knitting flat. You're not gonna be knitting in the round, okay? And it's because you want more floof to the skirt. And I'm using a worsted weight yarn. Okay, I'm using Red Heart because um, this is just going to be another doll dress. And this isn't this is a kind of a challenging pattern, but it really has a nice look to it. Okay, and it's well worth the effort. I promise. Okay. I'm about reached my end and I'm going to come around and I am personally going to be knitting the last stitch, slipping the first stitch, okay? I'm going to personally be doing that now. It says rows five, uh, row one through five is row one is knit, row two is purl, row three is knit, row four is purl, row five is knit, okay? this all written down. I made this Christmas time and was trying to pop out as many different um, gifts as possible so I'm having to come back and show you how to do this. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to knit your first row. Okay. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to go in and want to knit all the way around for your first row. Let's pause the video, knit your way around, and when we come back, I will show you how to do the next row. And then you're gonna do a two row repeat one more time, and then one row of knit. Okay, so pause the video, get your row of knit done, and then we'll come back. Okay, now that we've done that, I've knitted my last stitch, what I'm going to do I'm going to slip that first stitch and I'm going to purl my way around. 
What I want to do is create a chain so that I have an easy idea of how I want to sew my skirt. Okay. So go ahead and curl around. Okay, so pause the video and curl all the way around. You're going to repeat the last two rows one more time and then do one row of knit. Okay, so as you can see, knit, purl, knit, see if I can get to focus, knit, purl, knit, purl, and knit. So go ahead and pause the video, get that section done, and then we'll be ready to start the rest of the skirt. Okay? Okay, so we finished our knit one row, purl one row, knit one row, purl one row, knit one row. So we're to row six, and it says wedge decrease four and knit. All right. That means you're going to slide those down to the next slot on all four. All right. Slide those down on all four, and you're going to move those stitches over to the wedge pegs. Now, the reason why I choose to move them to the wedge pegs, as I have the falling, is you have a nice, neat decrease here. It keeps it really clean to do it like that. Okay, but you can do it the other way. You can. You can bring it here if you want, but I always usually bring it to the wedge pegs, okay? All right. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to knit the row, and on those wedge pegs, you're going to knit the two stitches together, okay? It's the reason why it says wedge decrease, which is what we're doing, all four, and then knit the row. Okay? So, what you want to do now is you... We've been slipping that first stitch, so it's easy to sew up later. You're just going to knit your way around. I'll show you the first wedge. All right. And knit both stitches together. Knit both stitches together. All right. So that's what you're going to do. You're just going to knit all the way around and on your wedge pegs, knit the two together. Then it'll say to knit so many rows and then do another wedge decrease. So 7, 8, 9, 10, you're going to knit four rows and then do a wedge decrease. All right. And that's going to be like the pattern that we're doing. So knit four rows, wedge decrease. Knit four rows, wedge decrease. And, um,. I'll come back to that after we get the wedge decrease row done. I'll come back and explain what the pattern is to get the first skirt done because it's going to be kind of a long tutorial to be able to get everything in. Um, this skirt is the easiest skirt. The next skirt is a little bit more challenging. Okay, we've done our decrease row. And at this point, What we want to do is knit for four rows back and forth. So we want to knit for four rows and then wedge decrease for four rows. Okay. So what it says on here, here's our wedge decrease, what we just did. Let's see if I there's the wedge decrease, what we just did. decrease, knit four rows. Wedge decrease, knit four rows. You're going to do that and do that and do that and you're going to do that a total of seven wedge decreases. Alright, so what you want to do is go ahead and pause the video and knit for four rows, wedge decrease, knit for four rows, wedge decrease. Okay, let's go ahead and pause the video and get that done. 
and then I'll show you the next step, okay? And you're going to end up making two of these. This is the easy part. Over here is when you do the decreases with lacing. Alright, so go ahead and pause the video, complete this skirt, and when we come back, we will start the next section. Okay, I've gotten down to my decreases. You're going to want a whole bunch of stitch markers for this and a stitch holder. Why do you want all this? I will explain. Okay, so this is what you should have. A beautiful skirt here. And if you're using something that seems a little stiff, you can um, heat up an iron and you can actually press this kind of stiffer yarn and you can actually assist the drape in making it a lot softer. Okay, so don't worry. If it's a little stiff, you can press it later and it'll actually soften the drape to make it hang a lot better. Okay, so what you want to do, you're going to end up making two of these. Okay, I've already snipped me a tail off. It doesn't have to be very big, but I give myself enough tail to make sure that um, I don't have any troubles. Okay, so what you want to do first is you want to go in and you want to add stitch markers to every single stitch. Okay, and it doesn't really matter which way you. Send it up through the top or whatever. So you want to add a stitch marker to every single stitch. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to place these stitches on the stitch holder. The reason being is these stitch markers can slip through the previous stitch and you can lose it. But when it comes to adding the skirt back on, you need more give in order to go ahead and add them back on. And um, I learned this when I started my first project with the XLM using a skirt, okay? It makes a huge difference. So you go in and you add these, and yes, it's a little extra timing consuming, but what it means is when you come back and you attach these to this, it makes it a heck of a lot easier when reattaching it to the loom, okay? So... Go ahead, pause the video, get a stitch marker in every single stitch, okay? And then we will be ready to show you the next step on taking the stitches off and adding them to a stitch holder, all right? And you're going to be using a stitch holder. You want either two stitch holders, I believe two stitch holders, for this project, okay? So then pause the video, get this done, and then I'll show you how to add the stitches to the stitch holder. Okay, I've got my stitch markers on. What I want to do is gently take them off. You don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on the stitches. I'm going to hold my stitch markers as I'm taking them off, okay? That way, it'll be fine when I go to add them back. Now, you ask yourself, do I really have to do this method? No, you don't. You could just go ahead and bind it off, make the other half of the skirt, all right? You, you can do that, all right? But, when you add a seam to a waistband, do not expect there to be any give, all right? When you do this method, there is give to the waist. You're adding this to a doll, and I'm not adding anything but a button to the back of it. Okay, that is how simple I am making this. Okay, I have gently taken everything off. I'm going to pull through. Send this through, send this through. It's okay if you get just as long as you get each stitch holder on there, okay? Try not 
try to get them in order too. And order is kind of important as well. Okay. stitches we're wanting to pull through. All right. So there you go. Put that aside. Okay. And make you a whole nother one. And I've been known to add the second skirt to this as well. The same stitch holder. Okay. Now that is how you go in and you take the skirt off. Can you bind off? Yes, you can bind off. You can do a stretchy bind off but when you sew it together the problem is you can add bulk to the waistline you can make it to where it doesn't have give and that can cause you problems but this is the skirt we've just made a half up now what you'll understand is you see that amount of stretch that waistband that is what you're giving which means it'll be so much easier for you or a child to be able to put this onto a doll's body okay because that stretches so nicely but if you do not feel comfortable you can go ahead and do a bind off and make the other half and do a bind off okay and you can do the skirt and do the half but in order to do this section here you're actually still going to need to use a stitch marker I'm afraid that's you're going to have to use that method at some point in this process. Okay. So go ahead and get your skirt done, your underskirt done. Okay. And then when we come back, I will show you how to do the overskirt here that's lace. All right. We're going to be working in a black color. So we're going to do a darker version of this. All right. Let's go ahead and. Um, pause the video, get your other skirt half done, and then when we come back, we'll be ready to start doing the lace skirt. Now, I will give you a plus, okay? When you do the lace skirt and do the decreasing in here, before you start this section here where you don't have to um, cut, you can add this skirt in, then you can knit however many rows it was, I had to look at my pattern, and then you add these to a stitch marker. Alright, so that's where you have one less step to have to go in and a stitch marker, da 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 okay? So, keep that in mind, alright? Okay, so I have completed my two sections of my skirt. And as you can see, I put them on the stitch holder. Now I'm just going to put them aside. Okay, well, we'll, we'll be making our next sections one half at a time. So the next section, and I'll try to explain this, is you're going to be casting on 56 pegs. And how you want to do that, I'm just going to lift the camera and show you. You're going to take and you're going to count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and there's 14. So you're going to do 14 on each section. Okay, and that's what it should look like. So that's 14 on each section, which uh, totals up 56. Okay, so you're probably wondering what a next section is. This is the next section. This is our skirt, and you'll see that the cast on is a standard. It's a uh, called what I call a lace cast on. Okay, and I will explain how that is done. You can do small or um, larger or less 
lace cast on um, depending on how many chains you want to do okay so what we're going to be doing is black is our contrasting color to our neon pink and so here's how this is going to go okay so you're going to double wrap okay and that's when you're going to put a stitch marker on all right this is just going to make it easier now if you're like me and you're used to what you're doing you you don't need this so you're going to do one wrap two wrap three wrap four and wrap five now i've been known to do seven but i'm going to do only five this time so it's up to you how many wraps you want to do you're going to take that stitch and you're going to move it over one. Then you're going to pick up your stitch marker and you're going to place that stitch back onto the loom. Okay? And you now have just cast it on two stitches. Yeah. In order to continue this process, you're going to go to the next stitch. You're going to double wrap it. And then what you're going to do is put a stitch marker on there okay then you're going to just wrap it five times so there's one two three four and five okay then you're going to take that stitch you're going to move it over one snug it up and you're going to bring that original stitch back All right. And now you have four casted on and two loops here. Okay. So you have, actually I just left the key. Okay, so now you have these two loops here. Okay. So you're going to continue this process going all the way around the loom. Okay. And we're knitting flat again, so we're going to be stopping here when I come back. We're going to be working a lace stitch on the X loom, so that will actually open you up to some ideas, okay? But go ahead and pause the video and lace cast on all the way around and stop here, okay? Okay, as you can see, we've done our lace cast on. It shows up a lot more prominently um, once you get to knitting. Okay, so. What it says next is it says your first row is going to be a knit, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start knitting. Your goal will want to try to knit the last stitch, slip the first stitch of each row um, in this process. It makes it a little easier to, to deal with, okay? Sewing it up later. All right. So. What you're going to do is you're going to go in and you're going to pause the video and you're going to go in and you're going to knit all the way around. So go ahead and pause the video and knit. And if you feel comfortable with that, go ahead and purl the next row. Okay. And then we'll start our lacing technique and I'll show you how that works. Okay. So go ahead and knit and we'll come back and I'll show you the next row. Okay, so we finished our knit row. Now it says to purl row two. So I'm going to slip that first stitch and I'm just going to purl my way around. Okay, so what you'll want to do is you'll want to pause the video and purl all the way around. And then we'll come back and I'll show you your lace row. Okay, we've done our purl row, and then it says in parentheses to knit one, and then to knit, to decrease, and then knit two together, okay? And um, then you're going to um, do that all the way around, and then you're going to knit these last two at the end is what it says to do, okay? So, um, because we're slipping that first stitch, we're not going to count it, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to knit one, and then we're going to pick up this stitch and we're going to move it over to the next stitch. So we're decreasing. We're going to yarn, we're going to slip from behind, 
and we're going to knit the two together. Okay. Alright. Now, the other method you can do if you don't want to be slipping behind is you can knit the one. So you're supposed to knit the one. Then you can knit this one and then you can decrease it by moving it over to the next one and then tossing the bottom loop over. That changes it quite dramatically. You can do it one of two ways, okay, but it's going to look differently. All right, but that would be still sticking with a similar method. So you can choose to knit and then you can choose to move it over as your decrease, slip that stitch, knit the two together. Okay, so every third peg should be empty. The other option is you can knit, then you can knit, take that, move it over, and knit. Okay, those two options, it's up to you. All right, um, if you do it the way I suggest doing it, it is going to look more like this, okay? Um, you know, if you do it the other way, it's going to probably look a little thinner, okay? I'm going to do it the other way just so you have an idea of what it looks like, all right? So um, the way I'm going to do it for this particular version is I'm going to knit the one, then knit the next one, decrease over, and then toss the bottom leg over, okay? That's how I'm going to do this. All right, so you're going to do that all the way around, and when then you get to these last two over here, they should be knit two, okay? That's how I have it written out. I tried to, you have to do two halves of these, so when I tried writing my notes out, I tried making corrections as needed, okay? So there's going to be a point where you're decreasing consistently every time so that you don't have troubles with your lacing area, okay? So what you want to do is go ahead and pause the video and get yourself all the way around. And then I'll show you how to do row four. And then um, we're going to, we're getting, working our way to a wedge decrease, okay? So go ahead and work your way all the way around. When we come back, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so every third peg should basically be empty, and the next thing it says to do on row four is to purl two yarn over. Because we're slipping the stitch, we're just going to purl this one, okay? Purl the next one, but every other thing will be a purl two, okay? So your yarn over is going to be in the front of the peg, but you're going to purl two, all right? And then you're going to yarn over, which is going to be in front of the peg, all right, and purl two. And you're going to do that all the way around, okay? And then we'll be ready for row five, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and get your purl two yarn over um, done all the way around. And... Um, when you get here, obviously, you're just going to purl that one and knit that one um, when it comes to the last stitch so that you, you, um, you're keeping up with uh, creating a chain so it makes it easier for sewing, okay? You don't have to do that. You can just follow it as it is, but um, because I want to try to have a nice, easy chain to follow, it's just keep in mind you're knitting the last stitch in a row and, and slipping the first stitch in each row, okay? So go ahead and pause the video, complete that row. When we come back, um, we'll go to the next row. Okay, so um, what we're ready to do next is we're going to do a wedge decrease on all four. So you're going to move all that down, do a wedge decrease. So what you do is you loosen the washers and you just take and move that down to the next stitches. Okay. You're going to do that with every single prong. Let me see if I can get this in the shot a little better. Oops. There we go. Try to get it in the shot a little easier for you. 
Okay, so you move that down to the next section. All right, then what you want to do is you want to take those stitches and you're going to move them over to the wedge pegs. All right, so you take those stitches and move it over to the wedge pegs. You can do that all the way around. This just kind of makes it easier to keep up with making sure that you've done every single wedge and decreasing it. Okay. And then once you do a wedge decrease, you want to do a knit all the way around. Now, keep in mind you're going to have to learn how to do the lacing stitch both ways, okay? Because it's alternating back and forth both ways. But it's not difficult. Once you get it one way, you can get it the other way, okay? So here we are over here. Now, at this point, I'll move it back down where you can see it right there. Okay, so at this point you've done your wedge decrease and you're going to just knit your way over. Okay. And when you get to those wedge pegs, you naturally knit those stitches over. Okay. And that is a wedge decrease. Now, you're going to be doing the repeat constantly over and over. I guess you could classify it as a series of um, six rows of this lace repeat that we're doing, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and knit your way around, okay? And then when we come back, I'll explain how to do the lacing the other direction and um, so that you know how to alternate back and forth. And then you're just going to continue this patterning until you're down to the um, 24 stitches like you are here. Okay, so pause the video, do your knit row, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do the lace stitch in the other direction. Okay, so we've knitted our way around and what we're doing is we're doing the lace stitching again. So I'm slipping that first stitch. I'm going to knit and then I'm going to knit the next stitch, move it over, and knit the bottom loop over. Now that's how I'm doing it for this, um, to this particular one, but if you're doing it the other way, you knit the next stitch, then you take and lift this stitch, move it over one, okay. yarn over, I mean slip behind it, and then knit the two together. Okay. And that's how you do both versions. But the version I'm doing is where I knit one, knit the next one, pick it up, move it to the next one, and toss the bottom loop over. All right, so you want to do that all the way around. Then you want to do the purl two yarn over, purl two yarn over, like we've been doing. It doesn't look any different. And then you do the wedge decrease. So you're going to repeat the three row set where you're doing the lace stitch, the purl two yarn over, and the wedge decrease. And you're going to do that until you're down to 24 um, pegs, okay? And then I'll come back and show you what the next section is, okay? Okay, if you've been working the pattern up, you've just done your last wedge decrease. And you might be asking, okay, what's up with this? Okay, so after your last wedge decrease, you're going to be doing the D, the lace row, the yarn over row, and then you're going to do a knit row, a purl row, and a knit row. Okay, so um, you're going to go in and you're going to slip that first stitch, and you're going to knit one, and then knit, move over, toss the bottom leg over. Okay. So you're going to go in and you're going to do the lace row, as I call it, all right? And it's not exact, you know, science. I haven't worked out that you're hitting the same peg every time doing the lace stitch, okay? Because mostly what I'm wanting with this is the texture, not the accuracy, okay? And you'll see that I didn't do it for accuracy on consistent um, pegs that have the same empty slot to them, okay? Mostly you're just trying to get that lace effect.
Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and complete your lace row and complete your pearl yarn over row. Alright, and so that should end you right back up over here, this peg here, after you do your lace and your pearl yarn over. Alright, okay, so pause the video, get your lace row done, then come back and do the pearl and yarn over, and you should end that back over here, okay? Okay, as you can see, we're back over here. All right. Now, what it says to do is to knit around, purl around, and knit around. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to slip that first stitch, of course, and you're just going to knit your way around. Okay. And so I want you to keep in mind that we're fixing to be adding one of our um, our underskirts, okay, and this is actually going to be easier than you think. And while you think, well, why don't you just do the overskirt first and the underskirt, it it doesn't work like that. Because um, it occurred to me, well, wow, why don't I do that? Um, you still have to take it off because you have the decreasing that you're doing, okay? So you can't just suddenly add it, start working it in. You still have to remove the stitches if you're going to try to do that, okay? So it's just still easier to do the underskirt first and then the overskirt and then add the underskirt, okay? Because of how the work is sitting, that's how you have to do it, okay? Okay, so you've knit it around. All right. Next, it says to purl it your way around. Okay, so you're going to slip that first stitch and you're going to purl. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and Curl your way around and then go ahead and knit around. Okay, so purl, knit, and we come back, we'll be ready to add one of our skirts. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, get those two rows done, and we'll be back and ready to add one of those skirts. Okay, I've done my purl all the way around. I finished with the overskirt and then now ready to add an underskirt. So what you want to do is you want to take off one of the skirts, one of the half skirts, all right? And you want to be very gentle, all right? Now, what you want to do is you want to send the right side facing you down in the middle. And you want to have your opening facing the same opening as here, okay? So you're going to send that through, all right? Now, you want to be very gentle when adding your stitches because as you can see, those can pull right through, all right? Um, I will try to do my best on this. Let me see if I can get this a little flatter so you can see it a little easier. Okay, now you want to be extremely gentle when adding your stitches back, okay? You want to find your end stitch and you want to place it on the loom. And I suggest when you're doing this you hold the next three stitches, all right? because your stitches can easily slide through. Don't worry about taking the stitch markers off just yet. All right, now, try not to twist, sorry, try not to twist the stitches as you're putting them back onto the pegs, okay? All right, you wanna 
grab the next three. Make sure you have them. Okay. So always have three in your hand when you're adding back so that the stitches don't slip into the previous one. All right. All right, so we got those. Pick up three more. Okay. And your next one. You want to make sure you aren't skipping any, okay, when you're adding these. All right. Make sure that's not twisted. And we're down to our last few. Okay. So that one there. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is now that you've got all the stitches back on the loom, okay, if you want to see if you've got it right before you take any of those off, turn it over. Splay it out like this, and then splay it out. And that is what it should look like, okay? I'm going to lift this up and show you what it looks like. All right. Okay, so you got your right side, then you got your lace, right? And that's what it's supposed to look like. All right, now, now that you've got that, go ahead and pause the video. And now that you know that you got your opening in the same spot and everything, go ahead and pause the video. Take all your stitch markers out. All right. Next thing we're going to be doing once you take all your stitch markers out. We're going to be working this section from here to here because you're going to be taking the stitches off again, all right, in order to do your other half. Plus, you're going to have to add them back onto the loom to do this section, which is where you are doing all four and decreases with the loom, okay? So, there's a lot of taking it off and putting it back on, and the reason being is you get all this stretch, which makes it a lot easier to put the um, dress on the doll, okay? And you have a lot more wiggle room, because this this will fit my teddy bear pattern. My, my daughter proved that one to me, okay? So this will fit my teddy bear pattern. It'll fit the uh, American doll. It'll fit the, uh, was it the life doll or my life doll or something like that. So this will fit a lot of... Um, things actually so you know all right let's go ahead and pause the video get your stitch markers out and we'll be ready to pick back up our black yarn and start working again okay now I noticed that I have the black yarn on the wrong side that happens I'm just gonna lift that up and move that back over not a big problem okay all right so take your stitch markers off and then we will come back and I will show you the next part, which is really easy, okay? So don't worry, it's really easy on my next page. Okay, I've taken all my stitch markers off. What comes next is we want to take our original black color here and we want to knit two stitches together all the way around, all right? So that's going to get you set up, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and knit the two stitches all the way around, okay? Okay, we've knitted our two all the way around. Um, what I like to do is, you've got this loose strand here. I like to just do a couple of half knots, tie it down so it doesn't release it, all right? So you've got the two skirts attached at this point. Now, what you want to do is you want to knit back and forth for a total of 10 rows, 10, right? While slipping the end and knitting your way over, right? So go ahead and pause the video and complete 
your 10 rows of knit, okay? So that's this section right here, all right? So go ahead and pause the video and complete those 10 rows, all right? And then we'll be taking that section off, all right? Okay, so I've done my 10 rows, as you can see pretty easily. All right. So you can see it a little easier. Okay, and so you can see how the skirt is panning out here. Okay, really, really nice. Make it a little easier to turn that one So, really nice, right? Okay, so just like we did with this skirt, you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to go in and you're going to put um, a stitch marker on every stitch and put it on a stitch holder. Okay, and then you're going to go and you're going to do the exact same thing with the other half of the skirt. All right. Pull that back down again. Turn the light on. All right. So you're going to go in and do the exact same thing you did with the pink skirt. You're just going to be doing it with the upper part of the bodice, okay? So this is where you may want a second stitch holder to start putting on your other half. Then you want to attach this half, this other half, to the loom like we had, okay? Um, what you'll do is you'll you'll take this off just like you did the pink skirt and you'll put it aside then you're going to go in and you're going to do your lace cast on you're going to start from that section where you do your lace cast on and then do the black skirt and then you're going to do the same thing you're going to add the pink skirt okay and then you're going to do 10 rows so that is where we're getting to the point of all right so when we come back what we want to be ready to do is adjust the other half to where it'll sit where it needs to on the loom for us to work the yoke neck. Okay, so that's our goal. We're working towards the yoke neckline. And um, so that's what we have next. All right, so go ahead and get this off the loom. Start your next lace skirt. Add the other pink skirt. Do your 10 rows, and we should come back, and it should look just like it does now, all right? So repeat that again, what we just did, and then we'll come back and be ready to do the yoke neck. Okay, so we finished our second half, and now here's where we want to start trying to work on adding our two halves together to start working our bodice, okay? And to the shoulder area. So what you want to do is um, like we've been doing, you've taken all these off, but we're not going to have to take all of them off. Um, mostly all we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take all the way to here off, all the way to here off. Then we're going to open up those wedges back up all the way, okay? And this time I've not cut my black yarn. I'm just going to work with what I've got from the original, um, from the last skirt I did, okay? So what you want to do is go ahead and um, add your stitch markers, your stitch holders here. You're going to take them off and you're going to spread them out, okay? But what we're going to do is I'm going to pause the video and here's where you're going to stop. You're going to stop here, okay? You're going to leave these four stitches on, all right? Because what you want to do is be able to um, just spread them out. Ain't no point in getting the whole dang thing off just to have to add, you know, them back if you already have it, okay? So um, I'm going to go over here and add this one over here. Again, we're leaving these four stitches on. So go ahead and pause the video 
and add stitch markers all the way around here, stitch markers all the way around here. Go ahead and lift those up so that when we come back, we'll be ready to show you the next step on getting this loom ready to start the shoulder area, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and get that much done. Okay, as you can see, I have taken all of them off except for these last four here. At this point, it's time to open up these wedges all the way. Okay. So we're going to open them up all the way. All four of them. start adding these stitches back okay you'll know whether they're twisted or not okay you just want to go in you want to start adding them back to the full length okay because what you're you're going to be doing is working up Bodus area, okay. And it may help to shove that out to be able to spread it out a little better. Make sure you get the next stitch in line so that you don't lose it, okay? Alright. Now, when I get here, um, I'm going to attach that, and then um, I'm going to put three stitches on top because I need it half and half. overlapping one here, okay, because you're going to basically need to overlap, because you're going to be, this section here is going to be your opening for the armhole, so it's going to be a shoulder area, so you know, and you keep in mind on that, all right? You may have to go in and loosen everything up to add that last stitch in there. Alright. You want to go in and you want to do the same thing on this side. Okay. Now, if you find that that stitch is just too tight, you can go in here and you can try to loosen that up. So that you can actually add that stitch back. And sometimes these things do get tighter. Okay. should loosen that up where you can add that where it needs to be. There. Sometimes you have to do that. Alright. So you want to add the same thing over here. And yes, this takes time, but it's how you get that lovely well worth the look that you get. Okay. So you want to add 
two here. Side should always be easier to end. Okay. Then the other. All right. So there you have the one side. You can take your stitch markers out. You've added that one half. Okay. Now you are going to be leaving these whole halves open, and now it's time to add the other half of the skirt. the right side facing you, okay? Now, what you'll need to keep up with is that you added one here, two here, a whole bunch of singles, and then two here and one here, okay? you got to keep up with that. All right, so I'm going to go in. And I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I'm going to gently pull this up through the center. Okay. I'm going to be starting over here. Okay. And now I remembered. Okay. How the heck are these things intertwined? Okay. Remember, I add one here, then I add two here. Okay. Just like that, it's just a mirror image of the other half of the loom. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, this is difficult to uh, get in the loom, but what you're going to do is you're just going to add it all the way over. Okay. Mean you can get it, okay? Just pulling it out, okay? All right. Now pause the video and add all your stitches back, okay? Okay. So um, as you can see, it's the same. There's two stitches, actually there, and that one, and then there's that. One. There's the same two stitches over here, and then there's that one. Okay, so now what we're ready to do is actually start working the shoulder and the bodice area. And this is the last leg of this dress. And it really doesn't take very long because of how quickly you need to decrease down for just the shoulder area to create that yoke neck line. Okay, so that's where we're going to start now and you're going to actually where you think you might would be able to knit in the round we're going to knit flat so that it makes it easy to actually add to be able to take this on and off any doll um, that's in this general size range because remember this pattern is very stretchy with the way that i've designed it Okay, so we have um, both sides added on. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to do a lace cast on for the rest of the pegs, which I believe was where we um, did, I think, E wrap chain five. Okay, and um, so we'll go ahead and double wrap and do a cast on there and then put that in there. Okay, so what I have in my notes is that you're just going to e-wrap the empty pegs with the lace cast on. Okay, and then you're going to just knit the other pegs. So if there's two stitches on it, you're going to knit the two stitches together. So here is one and two and three and four and five. So 
So just like we did with the second skirt, you lift that up, move that over, and then pull up your original cast on loop. Okay, make it a little easier for you. All right, and here's your first lace cast on, okay? So what you wanna do now is you want to do the lace cast on just like we did with the skirt here all the way over okay to here and then what you'll do is you'll actually knit so you'll knit those knit two together knit all the way around then knit two together over here and then knit one and then do your lace cast on okay then you're going to do the same thing on these back ones you're going to knit all this so what you're doing is you're lace casting on the empty pegs and you're knitting the rest and what we'll do is we will come back here and we're going to need to set up a new starting point okay and i will explain how that is so what you should do is end up right here okay and then i'm going to set us up a new starting point all right which is probably going to be over here because what we'll, need, we'll be doing is we'll be decreasing down and we don't want our starting point over here to be moving. So what you want to do is lace cast on the empty pegs, knit these pegs. If there's two stitches, toss both the loops over. So knit around and then lace cast on, knit around, and we should come back over here. All right, I'll show the lace cast on again. Double wrap add the stitch marker to it okay then you're just going to wrap for five times so here's one two three four and five okay then you're going to move that one over to the next available peg snug that up and then bring your stitch marker back up and put that onto the empty peg. All right, so go ahead and pause that and complete that much. All right, so that when we come back, we'll be ready to really start working the top of the bodice because actually we're almost done here. Okay, we really are almost done. Um, it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to be knitting flaps. We have a nice opening for the head so it'll fit on about any doll you know, that is in this size range. It'll fit my teddy bear pattern that's for the X-Loam. So uh, just so you know, it's going to fit um, a number of things, okay? Okay. So we've e cast it on, and we've gotten back over to this corner here. Well, we need to get over to here so that we can start knitting flat because I noticed when I had done the original doll dress I thought the neck area was a little too small and I only did it halfway up on there see so I'm going to do it all the way up so it'll actually slip over any doll's head that might run a little bigger than this style. I mean, this slipped over, but if you have a child dressing the doll, you don't want it to be too difficult for them to dress. Okay. So, what you're going to do is you're going to knit over 29 pegs. So you're going to knit around here, then around here, and you're going to stop here. Okay. So I'm going to start over here, and we're going to get her to our new starting point. And then we're going to start to knit flat. Okay. Once we get to that new starting point, then what we'll do is we'll start with one row knit, one row is going to have a uh, wedge increase to it. So, 
and you want the bodice to be kind of shorter when you get to the shoulder area in order for it to fit right in the shoulder area so it's really quick so when you get to this section you're really pretty much almost done you're down to the last few rows Okay, here we are. We've knitted our way over now. Um, at this point, I have tried to simplify it where I am um, knitting and then doing a wedge decrease. And as you can see on the original, I did one set of the lacing here on just the shoulder area. So what we'll do is we will, you can go ahead and do a knit a row and then wedge decrease if you'd like, or you can go in and actually do the lacing, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip that first stitch and I'm going to start knitting my way around, okay? So at this point, I'm just going to straight out knit a row and then when I go back to do the next row that's when I'll change up and actually do that lace stitching on that shoulder area okay let's go ahead and pause the video and get your knit row done and we'll come back and I'll show you the next section. So you're just going to go all the way around the loom and you should be stopping over here on your starting peg, okay? And then you're going to be working your way back around. So we're working flat at this point to give yourself plenty of headroom to slip it on and off the doll. Okay, so we've come back here and we're on this side and we're ready to Start knitting our way back. So we're going to slip that first stitch. And it's okay if you have a curl over that happens at the uh, back. It just adds a nice little teardrop shape to the back when it rolls. Okay. So you're going to just slip that first stitch. You're going to knit your way over until you get to that um, arm opening area. Okay. Okay, so at this point, what you want to do, knit that first stitch, take it over, toss the bottom layer, knit it, take it over, toss the bottom layer over. Do that to the entire area, over. Just the arm opening area, okay? Okay. Alrighty, now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to knit our way over to the other arm opening area. So we'll knit our way over until we get to over here, and then we'll do the same thing. Okay.
Okay, and you do the same thing that you just did over here. Get that first stitch, take it out, press bottom with it. Okay, here's our last one. And then knit your way over back to your starting point. and you're going to do that knit yarn over. Okay. So slip that first stitch, knit your way over. And what you'll do is knit over here and then yarn over that empty peg. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to knit your way over and do the same thing over here and then knit your way back here to the starting point. Let's pause the video and get that much done and then when we come back we have one more oddball row to do and then we'll be starting our wedge decreasing. Okay, we've gotten our way back around. Now what we want to do is we're going to slip that first stitch and start knitting our way over. And then once we get to that sleeve area, what you want to do is um, you'll want to purl those yarn overs, okay? So once you get over here, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and you'll purl that yarn over. Okay, and then you'll purl one. Just going to purl over just that section you've been working on, okay? And then we'll be ready to start a wedge decrease after we finish this row, okay? So, what you're wanting to do is just purl through the sleeve opening section, okay? And then go back to knitting. Then we'll be ready to start finishing up the bonus, okay? And that this is where we're winding down so that when you're done, all you should have to do is sew up the sides and skirts. And then I would suggest pressing the dress. Um, I'd suggest pressing the dress to make it really smooth and with this kind of stiffer yarn when you press it it'll help with the drape okay once you get over here then you will knit your way around and then when you get over here and you start seeing that yarn over section, you're going to purl all the way through here and then knit your way over here, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and get that much done. When we come back, I'll show you the next section. Okay, we're on the wind down where this gets easier. What you want to do is you want to wedge decrease. stitches over and then at this point it doesn't matter okay 
it doesn't matter um, what you do, you're going to be knitting the arm opening area, okay? And you may find it easier to go ahead and move the stitches before you actually um, move the wedges sometimes. You can do that. It's all of just getting those decreases down, okay? So, move that down and tighten. You want to do that with all of them. And then what you want to do is you want to knit the row. Okay. Go ahead and move that one down. You'll want to go ahead and you want to knit the row. And of course you knit the two stitches together on those decreased pegs, just like you did. Okay. Um, we're knitting flat. It's pretty much the same thing we've been working with. Okay. So, for instance, we've finished over here. What we're going to do, we're going to knit our way around. You're going to knit the two together here, and that is row one. And row two is just, so you're going to knit all the way around, and then you're just going to knit. You're not going to wedge decrease. Then row, the row, that's row two, okay? So row one is a wedge decrease. Row two is a knit, okay? And you're going to continue this, do, 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 all the way down to... See how many wedge decreases you have. So we're doing our first wedge decrease. There's one, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're going to have a total of seven wedge decreases. Okay. And so we're going to tell you to pause the video. Okay, so you wedge decrease a row, then you knit a row. Wedge decrease a row, then you knit a row until you're down to these middle um, rows. So seven decreases, so we just did one, and then here's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're not going to go all the way down to 24. You're going to go as far down as, like, say, 36 hex left, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video. And... Um, get this much done and then when we come back we'll be ready to finish off the neckline so we're really close to to done with this okay as you can see we've decreased to just before the last available possible decrease so we are to this neckline here and what you want to do is you'll want to purl a row and then you'll want to bind off. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to slip that first stitch and just purl your way around. Okay. So, this is easy. This is pretty self explanatory. You just want to purl your way around. And then we are almost done. We are almost ready for bind off. Then it's pretty simple from there. So go ahead and pause the video and do your row of pearl, and then we'll come back. Okay, so we want to finish this off, and what you want to do is you want to create a buttonhole, as you can see right here. That's your buttonhole on your bind off. So what you want to do is you want to erect chain. You want to erect chain five. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. All right. Then what you want to do is you want to knit the next stitch, move it back one, toss the bottom, lay it over. Now. You have two options. If you want it to be a little stretchy, you can do the modified bind off that Luma Hat does, or you can just do a looser bind off, which we've given you enough opening that you shouldn't have to do 
the modified bind off. Just don't do a real tight bind off, okay? So it's a pretty standard bind off. Toss the bottom lip over, move it back one. Toss the bottom lip over and move it over. Okay, so just do a nice looser bind off. You don't have to pull it or anything. Just where it's comfortable to go in and move everything around, okay? And so what you want to do is you just want to bind off like you normally would all the way around and then we are done on the loom. Now at this point what will happen is my suggestion would be to go ahead and press the skirts but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to sew up your sides using the chains on both skirts but you don't want to sew them together you want to sew them separately so they have this nice separation okay so that's what you want to do and then you'll want to add a small button here at the neckline okay and then you will have made the double layered doll dress okay now if you wanted to make this for say a four-year-old you could you just take the um, super large X loom and the um, half inch gauge and you just double everything in this pattern and you can make it to the size of a toddler and so this dress can be made to toddler size you just have to double everything I mean double everything all right and that will give you the size for a toddler so that is how you make the dress and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on seeing the full spectrum of what your X-Loom can do.